Good morning to all our family and friends. Welcome to GCF Northwest Worship Celebration. It's another wonderful day for all of us to be gathered together to worship our God. As we start to worship the Lord, may I invite you to reflect with me the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Here is the invitation of our Lord Jesus Christ for all of us to shine, to let our light shine before people in this world. This is an opportunity for us to be an influence and inspiration to this dark world. How can we be salt and light? The, the Lord Jesus Christ spelled out that it is by doing good works. We can be lights of this world when we do good works to them. And the blessing is that this will give way for people to glorify God, our Father who is in heaven. Shall we continue to be lights of this world and let's continue to worship the Lord together. Let's worship Him right now with songs of praise. This morning as we worship our God, may we keep in mind the hope that we have in Him. For He will come again and we will be reunited with Him. So this morning, let's sing. Arise, O Lord, come and take your place. Be enthroned. Thing we ask of you, one thing that we desire. As we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. Arise, 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 arise. Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing. We lift you up, we lift you up, 
We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. Arise, take your place. Be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing. day to come that you will claim your throne you will be king over everything here on earth in the heavens everywhere your presence is known as the king of all kings we thank you so much dear God and we continue to look forward to that day and praise you every step of the way Continue to sing of our Lord and His work in our lives. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sore, still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on clouds, shining like sun, as the trumpet calls a the year of Jubilee, and down in Zion still salvation comes. These are the days. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding the temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest. The fields are as white in your world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Behold, he comes. Riding on clouds, shining like the sun, as the trumpet calls with no voice, it's the year of Jubilee, and outside still salvation comes. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, as the trumpet calls with no voice, it's the year of Jubilee. And out of sight still salvation comes There's no God like Jehovah 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 there's no God like Jehovah. 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 Behold, He comes riding on the clouds, shining like the sun. As the trumpet calls, the wind of your voice 
Salvation will come. Let's give a clap offering to our God. Let's continue to worship our God. May we find comfort in this song that reminds us to be strong and to take courage. For we have the Lord in our lives. Despite the pandemic, despite the crisis, despite our challenges. Just be strong and take courage. Be strong and take courage. Do not fear. Or be dismayed For the Lord will go before you And His light will show the way Be strong Be strong And take courage Do not fear for me this may for the one who lives within you will be strong in you today why don't you give him of your fears why don't you let him all of your tears He knows He's been through pain before And He knows So then you've been looking for So be strong And take courage Do not fear For me Thank you. 
being strong and courageous in you and in your world. Thank you, dear God, for you grant us comfort, for we are your children and we are safe in your hands. Lord, thank you for knowing our name, knowing everything about us. comfort and security no matter what we are going through so may we take heart may we take courage no matter what amen good morning my brothers and sisters in gcf northwest may i invite you to bow down our heads close our eyes and let's pray eternal father you are the one and only Holy Father in heaven and on earth. We humble ourselves and confess that we need your help to walk holy in this life you have given us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's conviction and correction that you have freely bestowed to those who believe in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We pray that the Holy Spirit in mercy would convict us of any sin or any bad habit that is in our life. We forsake our pride and renounce it in Jesus' name. We want to live a life that brings glory and joy to you. Dear Lord, thank you for the daily guidance. May our heart always be soft and sensitive to quickly respond whenever you convict us of any wrong or offense. Dear Lord, you are our shield, our strength, our portion, our shelter, our strong tower and deliverer. Use mightily our pastor 
to bring your words to our hearts, that we may be intentional and passionate in doing the works for your kingdom. Lord, thank you for the men and women who serve our country and in leadership roles and for their families. Please provide our leaders with reminders each day of why they decided to dedicate their lives to public service and use that com commitment to encourage them. And Lord, we continue to pray for the vaccination rollout in our country. May we, may, may we reach our objective of herd immunity by end of the year or early next year. And we continue to pray for our brothers and sisters who are experiencing sickness, loss of a loved one. Lord, may you grant us healing, peace, and comfort amid these trials. We lovingly surrender everything into thy hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. Our scripture for today comes from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12 from the English Standard Version. Let's read together. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come, unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called god or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill in the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is the activity of Satan with all the power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-12 to May God bless the reading of His Word. Good morning, everyone. This morning, let us prepare our hearts and minds as we listen to God's Word through Pastor Jerry Agoncillo. Do not be alarmed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1-12 to 12. A blessed Sunday morning to all of you, my family and friends. There are a lot of things that surprise us these days and may even shake our beliefs and convictions in life. We read and watch about the rising infection of COVID-19 in our country and community. 
the news of the side effects of a certain brand of vaccine, the closure of small to medium businesses, and some big or well-established companies, the death of a loved one, relatives, and friends. All these have the potential to shake our faith and convictions. It is my prayer that we will receive instruction and encouragement from God's Word this morning so that we will not be shaken and alarmed. We are continuing our sermon series on the marks of a disciple-making church, and I entitled our sermon today, Do Not Be Alarmed, based on 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. It's about the 10th mark of a disciple-making church, and that is unshakable conviction. Yes, this is the 10th sermon on this theme that we started with the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the believers in Thessalonica. All believers must possess unshakable conviction in growing degrees so that we will be able to fulfill the discipleship mandate of the church given by our Lord Jesus Christ. That all of us will be part of the disciple-making process of GCF Northwest as the Lord commanded us to make disciples of all nations. In spite of the challenges we are facing nowadays, I encourage you to be strong in your beliefs of the truth and be unshakable in your conviction. Let's pause for a while right now and please join me in prayer. Father, we come before you asking for your inspiration and enlightenment through the Spirit so that we will only hear your message clearly. Lord, give me your insights and words of truth so that I can speak with boldness and clarity to your people once again. Will you open our hearts and minds to your truths as you speak to us, to all of us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In order that we will not be alarmed in the face of difficult situations in our lives, we have to understand the difference between a belief and conviction. Many people believe in God. They profess faith in Jesus, but when confronted with a problem, they are easily troubled and question what they believe or even question God in their lives. So what's the difference between a belief and conviction? Someone defined it this way. A belief is something that you hold on to, while conviction is a belief that holds you. Beliefs are principles and truths that you come to understand and embrace regardless of the evidences. Beliefs are basis of your convictions. However, if you have doubts and are not fully convinced about a certain belief, they will be a belief, they will just be a belief, not conviction. Convictions are strong and sure beliefs. Convictions are what guide you and build your life. I would say that conviction is a committed belief. It's a belief that is applied and lived out based on the clear and absolute truth from God's Word. I pray that as we go through tough and trying times in our lives, we would not be alarmed nor shaken in our convictions about God and His purposes for our lives. The Apostle Paul immediately told the believers in Thessalonica not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed. 
there are two words that I want us to understand at the start of our passage today. The words shaken and alarmed. Shaken means to be disturbed, to be agitated like that of strong winds, earthquakes, or floods. The word describes a ship that is tossed to and fro in the middle of the sea by big waves and strong winds. It's a picture of directionless motion and constant instability. The second word is alarmed. In other Bibles, it was translated to trouble, which refers to being unsettled or nervous. Apparently, the Thessalonian believers were greatly disturbed or shaken in their minds. They were alarmed because of the news that the day of the Lord had already come, that the sufferings and afflictions they were experiencing were part of the great tribulation. Sadly, many of them believed an erroneous or wrong teaching about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the reason why Paul referred them to his previous teachings and explained them some details and specifics about the day of the Lord. I will be presenting two major questions that will help us not to be alarmed in our belief and conviction unlike what happened to the Thessalonian believers. Let me first tell you the summary thought of our sermon today. Believers are unshakable in their convictions because the Spirit continues to restrain the works of lawlessness. Believers are unshakable in their convictions because the Spirit continues to restrain the works of lawlessness. The first question is, what causes people to be alarmed and shaken in their conviction? What causes people to be alarmed and shaken in their conviction? A. Misinformation. There was a misinformation that the day of the Lord has already come. Paul wrote them in verse 1, Now concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to Him. Apparently, there were erroneous teachings circulating among the people at the time. There were three possible sources or natures of this misinformation. One, false claim of inspiration. Paul mentioned by a spirit, a certain and different spirit from those of Paul. Two, false report, a spoken word. False teachers teaching different kinds of doctrines. Third, false writing, a letter seeming to be from us. That's what Paul mentioned early on in our passage. Apparently, there was a fake or forged letter being shared and circulated among the believers. Those were the sources and natures of misinformation. Secondly, there was a deception. Deception. Misinformation leads to deception. The most effective way to dispel deception is to know and understand the truth. The center of the deception was misinformation about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ or what we call the day of the Lord. Paul presented truths and taught them that the day will not come unless and until these three major events occur. One, the rebellion comes. There is a falling away or what we call the apostasy. It must happen first. Unless the rebellion or the apostasy comes, the coming of the Lord will not take place. This rebellion will not be about politics, but of faith. There will be a massive and widespread apostasy or rejection of the faith. There had already been a falling away of some sort by some people who initially professed their faith and eventually denied it. However, what 
Paul referred to in this passage will not just be about some isolated or specific group, but more on a worldwide pandemic proportion of falling away. It's the apostasy. Two, the man of lawlessness is revealed. Unless the identity of the man of lawlessness is revealed, the coming of the Lord will not happen. Now, please don't make it your goal to look for or search for the identity of this man of sin. I'll tell you in a while why there's no need for you to identify him at this time. Three, the restrainer is removed. The restrainer is removed. In verses 6 and 7, I will read it. And you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. Take note that the reason why we don't know the identity of the Antichrist or the man of lawlessness then and until now is because someone is restraining him. And until the one who restrains is removed or taken away, the identity of the man of lawlessness will not be revealed. And consequently, the day of the Lord will not take place. This is the reason why it is useless for all of us to look for the Antichrist right now. While the word restrainer does not appear in the English text of the Bible, it's clearly inferred by the phrases, you know what is restraining him in verse 6 and he who now restrains in verse 7. The question is, who is the restrainer? He must be powerful enough to restrain Satan, definitely and ultimately only God is more powerful than Satan and he alone can restrain the man of lawlessness or the Antichrist who is empowered by Satan. It is the Holy Spirit who is the restrainer. We all know from the Bible that one of the ministries of the Holy Spirit is to restrain sin. This is implied in Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 3. In Greek language, all nouns are assigned with a gender, either masculine, feminine, or neuter. In verse 6, it used the gender neuter, and in verse 7, it used masculine. It can be best explained as referring to the Holy Spirit since the Greek since in Greek language, the word spirit is neuter and the masculine is used because he is a person. The Holy Spirit will be removed from the earth together with the believers before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. At present, the Spirit uses the church, the body of believers whom He indwells to restrain sin. Dahil nandito pa at nananahan sa atin ang banal na espiritu, siya ang pumipigil upang ang mga kasalanan at kasamaan ay hindi palubos na lumaganap sa ating mundo. Kaya hindi pa rin natin malalaman ang pakakilanlan sa Antikristo. When the rapture happens, and the Holy Spirit together with Christians are removed from the earth, then the man of lawlessness will be revealed. And then the rebellion or the apostasy will take place and the day of the Lord will commence. See, misrepresentation. Another reason why believers were shaken and alarmed was due to misrepresentation. Misinformation and deception includes misrepresentation, false teachers, presented reports, and news that theirs were the truth to be believed. That 
Paul's initial teachings were false and erroneous. They must have spread that the day of the Lord had come. This is the reason why Paul had to refer them back to the original teachings he had taught them. He also told them that the man of lawlessness will come and is going to oppose and reject all things of faith in the true God. He will exalt himself above God by declaring himself to be God. That's the height of rebellion and pride. Please listen carefully so that you will not be alarmed and shaken in your beliefs and convictions. The day of the Lord, as initially presented by the Apostle Paul in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 11, is a series of events from the time of the Great Tribulation to the time of the Millennium. It will begin from the time of the rapture of the church. That is when all the believers, both the living and those who have passed away will be caught up in the air with Jesus, and then all of us will be taken to heaven with Him. The rapture will simultaneously and immediately usher the great tribulation. It will be a seven years suffering, although the second half will actually be extremely severe, than the first three and a half years period. If you will read our passage carefully, the Apostle Paul presented the events that precede the day of the Lord in a reverse order. First, the restrainer will be removed at the rapture. It was presented third in our passage today. Then the man of sin or lawlessness will be revealed. And lastly, there will be a rebellion from the faith. All these three events will take place before the day of the Lord. You might be saying, Pastor, is that the pre-tribulation rapture and pre-millennium second coming of Christ that you are presenting? Yes, I believe that that would be the chronology of events. In case you hold to a different position or view regarding these events of the last days, which some of the respected pastors also believe, I respect you for that. Anyway, if you have truly put your faith in Jesus Christ and are saved when the rapture happens before the great tribulation, you will still be included with us who will be taken by our Lord Jesus Christ to heaven on that day. Believers are unshakable in their convictions because the Spirit continues to restrain the works of lawlessness. Believers are unshakable in their convictions because the Spirit continues to restrain the works of lawlessness. The second question that I would like for us to answer this morning is that how can believers become strong and stable in their conviction? How can believers become strong and stable in their conviction? A. Remember the truth. The Apostle Paul told them, Do you not remember? I told you these things. The first way to fight misinformation and deception is to know the truth. You have to go back and remember the lessons you have learned and heard. Do not immediately and easily believe and accept the miraculous and marvelous things that are happening around you. Let me read to you the first portion of verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Verse 9 also reads, the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. Before the second coming, before the day of the Lord comes, there will be activities that are marvelous, that are powerful. There will be false signs and wonders that people will see and experience. Nakakalungkot lang po 
dahil po sa ating sitwasyon po ngayon, mas maraming naniniwala agad sa mga bagay na kakaiba at doon sa mga kagimbal-gimbal kaysa doon sa mga bagay na nangyayari na pangkaraniwan. What do I mean by this? Because of our pandemic right now, a greater percentage of our citizens do not want to be vaccinated. That's around 35% who are uncertain, while 33% are unwilling. Only 32% are willing to be given a vaccine shot. Those data were the result of a survey conducted by SWS last May. Many are afraid of the probable side effects of the vaccine, but are not fearful of the full or the possible full effect of COVID-19 virus in their bodies and also with their families. My family and friends, our faith in God is not confined to the things that are miraculous, but also to the modern science discoveries, medicines, medical interventions, and common realities of life. I respect if you have a different position and stand about the vaccination program of our government. But please do understand that our faith in God does not nullify the truth and reality that we are experiencing today. Whether you don't believe that this virus is true and real and the vaccine is effective, the truth is COVID-19 had killed millions of people, have taken millions, the lives of millions, not just in our country but also around the world, and made more people sick, worse than their previous conditions. The vaccines have protected millions from getting sick and allowed people to go back to their regular and normal activities without fear of infection. And even some parts of the world are already removing masks. They are no longer wearing masks. COVID-19 had led to the downfall of the world's economy and changed the way we live today and probably for the rest of our lives. The vaccines that we have today will allow us to meet our loved ones, and other people again without those fears and concerns. My question is, what truth are you believing and holding on to? To what or whom is your conviction founded? I pray that you believe the truth from God's word and build your conviction on the God of the truth, not just on some news and experiences of others. B, remain in your love for the truth. Remain in your love for the truth. Verse 10 reads, And with all wicked deception for those who are perishing, because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Those who will be deceived are those who refuse to love the truth. Those who are, whose hearts are not of the things of God. So the opposite is true. All believers must continue to love the truth if they are to find and experience stability in their convictions. Love the truth and the God of the truth. Let us see. Refrain from believing what is false. Let me read to you verses 11 and 12. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
those who refuse to love the truth will encounter strong delusion that will lead them to believe what is false instead of what is true. Although this portion of the scripture pertains to the unbelievers who refuse to receive the truth or believe the truth and are not saved, God's word says that the spirit of the lawless one is now at work. He will try to deceive the people of God and shake their convictions. However, God will put judgment on Satan and all those who rejected Jesus and did not put their faith in God. They will be condemned and will suffer the eternal judgment or punishment in hell for all their sins. Believers are unshakable in their convictions because the Spirit continues to restrain the works of lawlessness. My family and friends, I entitled the sermon today, Do Not Be Alarmed. But if you do not know the truth, do not love the truth, and continue to believe what is false, that is a very alarming condition. Those beliefs and convictions are not of God. However, if you truly believe with all your heart that Jesus is the only Savior and His death on the cross is enough to pay for the penalty of all our sins, then your beliefs and convictions are solidly grounded on the truths of God. As I close the sermon this morning, I know that the Lord has spoken to your heart. To those who are not yet sure if you have been forgiven of your sins and have received eternal life from God, today is the best time to make a decision to put your faith in Jesus and surrender your life to God. If that is the desire of your heart, I will be leading you in a simple prayer of faith, but I want you to be true to the Lord or true to God because more than anybody else, He alone knows what's the condition of your heart right now. He alone can forgive your sins and give you eternal life. You can pray along with me silently in the comfort of your home or rooms and even in the silence of your heart right now. May I invite you to pray with me. If you would like to receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, talk to God right now through this prayer. Lord God, I open the door of my life. I know that I have sinned. I know that my belief is not sure. And I'm not sure, Lord God, if I have that salvation that you alone can give because you are our gracious God and Jesus died for my sins. Right now, I confess my sins and right now I ask that you would forgive me, Lord God, and receive Jesus Christ into my heart right now. Lord God, forgive me and cleanse me from all the sins. And thank you for your promise that you will Give me eternal life as you have promised for those who believe and receive Jesus Christ. Thank you for this truth that I can hold on to right now because you said so. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you truly receive Jesus Christ and put your faith in him, I would like you to understand that God's promises are true. And he is going to be faithful to what he said. For the rest of us, right now, I would like to invite you to pray with me as we close our time together in prayer. Lord God, thank you for this morning. 
Once again, Lord God, you have given us this privilege and blessing to worship you together with our family and friends. Thank you also for speaking to our hearts. And Lord, right now, as we continue with our life this day and even in the months and years to come, may our beliefs and convictions be always be solidly grounded in the truths of your word for all of us, that all of us with all our family and friends will continue to grow strong and put our continued hope and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ because his spirit, the Holy Spirit is here in us, restraining all the works of the lawless one. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, dear God, for we can take courage in you. Take courage, my heart. 
Stays steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. Hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. So take courage, my heart. Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. He's in the waiting. Hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. By the way, before we end our time together this morning, to those who have made the decision to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, would you kindly inform us of that decision by uh, chatting uh, or giving or typing words in our chat box and uh, allow us to contact you in the coming days. Thank you very much to all our family and friends. Thank you for joining our worship celebration here in GCF Northwest. And uh, I would like for us to continue to reflect on God's message for us and even enjoy the day. God bless us all.